and welcome to the 40th anniversary of Chester Radio Society. My name is Alan Warne, G4EZO, and today, with the aid of the Society's archives and some of the club members, we hope to take you on a graphical journey over the last 40 years. First, we'll hand over to Howell, G3ATZ, one of the founder members. Um, the picture we see on the screen at the moment is uh, what I consider to be the first records of the Chester Radio Society, in, in book form anyway. It's, it's showing the inaugural meeting of the Radio Society, and um, it was held at the United Services Club in Watergate Street in Chester. Uh, was this the first time that you found out about it? Uh, no, no. In fact, um, we did have a very informal meeting at the Cross Foxes Hotel in Borden, um, invited by letter from Stan Dutton, together with uh, Charlie Rich and Co. Oh, I see, because as I found out, uh, on June the 13th, 1948, uh, Stan Dutton, as you just mentioned, put an advert in the Chester Observer suggesting the forming of the Chester Radio Society, and I didn't realise that that was, uh, you know, at another uh, venue. So what we're really saying is this is a first official that, meeting the first of the Radio Society. Meeting, and the advert was to get more members because there were only the original seven ah, at that time. Nice to have the, the true facts, isn't it, Hal? Um, and I think that's, that's probably quite readable. That there's quite a few names that we, uh, we recognise there. The noticeable ones are John FMV and, of course, yourself. Uh, now, that picture there, I wonder if you recognise that one? Yes, I think that is the first um, annual dinner... Uh, which was held at the Bird and Billet in uh, Lower Watergate Street, I think, or no, Lower Bridge Street. That's right, that was in 1949, yes, yes. in actual fact, Hal. Yeah. And um, I've got the feeling that the, uh, the cost there was, was minimum. I think it was seven and sixpence per ticket, from what I hear. And that was yeah, on I the really 20th. I can't remember that. Yeah, well, I, my records say the 25th of April that all happened. Mm -hmm. Um, after that, we go on to, I believe, the Tarran Hut. Why was it called the Tarran Hut, Hal? Well, I don't know. I think it's due to the type of construction. It's very similar to a Nissan Hut, except the Nissan Hut is all corrugated iron. That happens to be breeze block and um, felting tarred over. I see. What, was that in the grounds of the YMCA? Yes. yes. And, and those are the lads inside. There's quite a few photographs here inside the Tarran Hut. Um, I think that's uh, George, HLP, is it in the front George over there? George in the middle there, in the front, yes. I think there's your good self away at the very back yes. on, the, on the left. Stan Dutton, John Butler, uh, Charlie Rich leaning against the window. So quite a few names we know. Mm -hmm. um, my records say that the first chairman was um, Mr E.J. Greenwood. The president was Mr Jordan. He was the BBC local rep. Uh, of course, the, the, the honorary secretary then was Stan Dutton. And the treasurer was Mr Ford. And the first two committee members were yourself and uh, Frank Withall. And a junior member, Mr. Jay Parsonage. So uh, I presume you probably remember yes, all those very well, well indeed, uh, do you, Hal? Apart from Mr. Parsonage, I, I remember the others. Uh, you will notice that on this shot, the, the table is actually an old door taken from the wall that we knocked down. That was as much as you could That's afford as then, as was it? Could afford, yes. <laughs> very good, that. <sighs> Who have we got there? This uh, shot is, shows uh, Bill Lloyd, a very good cook, actually. Didn't know much about radio, but his AC chips were absolutely delicious. Do you know and anybody then, else? Of course, we have two IS, myself, and one or two others whose faces, unfortunately, I don't recognise now. Would they be junior members of the time? They probably were junior members, yes. Another shot of Bill Lloyd, uh, two IS operating. I think myself on the right at the back, and the fellow in the middle, again, I, I just can't recall that one. Was that the club's gear or different people's gear? Uh, different people's gear, yes. They sort of all brought it together as we, we brought it together as when necessary. Yeah, I'm sorry about that one. It's uh, the light reflected on the front panel on the original photograph. Yeah, I think it's just a general group photograph of, uh, of a meeting. Again in the Tarrant Hut, Again I think, in isn't the Tarrant Hut. Still in 1951, here's another interesting shot. Um, I think the best person to describe this to us is John G3FMV, who's one of our founder members. I think he was in the, uh, the throes of it at the time. John, I've got written down here, team making recording of Voice of America programme. Uh, which mystified me a bit. Can you let us know a little bit more about it? Yes, well, there were six of us doing this little uh, tr trip to America, as you might say. Uh, there was Howell on the left-hand side at the rear, G380Z, and then myself, and then... Uh, what's his name? Bill Lloyd. And then Bill Lloyd, oh, that's Bill Lloyd, known for his big feet, as uh, those who were with us at the time will remember. And on the right were the headphones, was Swinnerton. Oh, was that our, John Swinnerton? John, John Swinnerton, yes. Yeah. Our chairman at the time. And at the uh, transmitter, 
is our founder member, Stan Dutton, G3EXT, and then on the left the bottom headphones is Bob Ludlam, who was a, a visitor from the United States and regular at the club for some time. He made this recording on a wax disc, and this, this recording was then sent over to America where it was broadcast on the Voice of America program across over this way. Thank you very much, John. That was that was very, very interesting. I think we'll bring you in on another shot a little bit later on where um, I think you're in somebody's shack or somebody's in your shack. This one is Hellsby Hill, 1951, uh, Region 1 field day uh, in my records. Do you remember it? Not a great deal. No, it's, it's just one of those shots that yes, we, we thought a, worth a, putting a down. A number of photographs were, in fact, taken. Yeah. Now, these are members at G2YS's, I yes, believe. Yes, at the shack of G2YS at uh, Crystleton. Um, George HLP on the left, uh, John Butler in the centre, middle, and myself, of course, on the right at the back with uh, John G2YS in the foreground operating his uh, famous AR-88 and his homebrew transmitter. That's fine. You see there we had a fifth annual dinner on the 17th of April, 53, at the Bars Hotel. Now, these are quite interesting. This is June 1953, field day at Manor Croft. Where on earth is Manor Croft? Uh, Manor Hall? Croft, I think you're really meaning Culpit Lane, a field uh, owned by JJS. This is Arthur JJS, yeah, is Arthur it? Arthur JJS, that's right. Yes, Arthur's moved to Winsford, He's I think, now, hasn't now he? living at Winsford or Crewe. Yeah. You can see me operating there. There's George oh, yes. HLP. Um, I think there's Matt Young there as well, who was a member at the time. G2IS doing another... What, what, sorry to disturb you, Hal. What's that rig there on the left? Uh, that is a, a BC348. Right. I think it belonged to me at the time, because I did it, own one at and that the, time. And the, and the, a home-brewed uh, rig in the middle. Right. Do we know that fellow on the right-hand side there? That's two IS on the right, Bill Lloyd at the back, yes. on the right, and the... I recognise the face, but not a name, but the gentleman on the left. Another general shot. Yes. Did this operate on still, a... Still at Culpit Lane. Right. Did this operate on, on a similar system to what we do nowadays? Oh, was yes. It but, CW and was yes, it from a generator? Yes, under, under the table, um, you'll find large quantity of 12-volt uh, batteries because all these were energised by rotary converters. Uh, that's an interesting transmitter built by me. It was the B station, uh, 7, 14 and 28 megs. And believe me, we worked VK successfully on that. What sort of aerial would you be using in those days? Um, Can you remember? They were Wyndham's, basically. Well, that's, that's, that's a single, single wire fed top. Another general shot. That's, um, I think that one's a Region 1 field day, um, 1954. Yes, well, most of these were in, did in fact take place at Culpit Lane. Yeah, they're all around about 1953, yes. 54. I've even got a 1955 NFD at Mollington as well, uh, which um, it was probably all in the, in the sort of the same CW yes. era, was it, of that's contests? It. That's it. Uh, that's the seventh annual dinner there, which I thought was quite interesting. Price ten shillings. I'm sure you all remember the Kingsley Cafe in Fourgate Street. I certainly yes. do. This is a B station, NFD 1957. I don't know what the fellow's doing on the roof there. It looks a bit rude to me, but uh, I'm sure it's all in the uh, spirit of aerial erecting. And that's sort of another shot of the, uh, the same NFD. Now, I wonder who recognises this photograph. While we were doing radio in about circa 1959, this gentleman here was a, a pop singer. I believe in London. Yes, it's Dave. Dave Hicks, G6 IFA. Sorry about that, Dave, but I just thought I'd throw it in to, uh, to get us all going a bit. I think you look pretty handsome in those days, particularly with that, uh, that haircut of the, uh, of the early 60s. Now we move into the 1960s, and this first slide that we see here, it's got written on the back of it, um, MCC, FNV and ATZ, so I think we'll talk to John again here. John, what's this MCC to start with? Oh, MCC, that was magazine club contest, run by the shortwave magazine. Oh, I see. Now, what's going on here? Is this your shack or Hal's? Oh, uh, that's, that's my shack, yes. What gear were you we, using, John? We were there for three years, and I think this was the 1960 time. What was the receiver? The receiver, the uh, Edison 750. And the transmitter? I can't remember the transmitter. I think it was whose that was, or what it was. Ah, this one here now. This is the 1964 constructional contest where I appear, I'm afraid. On left to right is myself, G4EZO, G8AYW in those days, then D. Greg, I just can't remember the young lad's name there at the time, but we were in the junior side of the contest from what I can remember. Then there was Dennis, EWZ, 
Burt Poole there, GW3JAZ, and uh, G2FOS Ken Birch, the judge. There's Reg, G3DRB, with his Morris Minor 1000. I think it's at Trentham Gardens. That's another shot of Trentham Gardens, uh, which I'm sure you know very well indeed, Hal. Ah, now that's Malcolm, G3UWV, who had a, a Ford van with a 19 set in it, using top band mobile, with a vertical using, I think it was a fairy liquid bottle, yes, wasn't it? With actually, many it turns of wire on it. Blob of oh, you can, right at the top yeah. of the picture, that's right, yeah. Malcolm, of course, now is in Melbourne in Australia, and we regularly communicate via videotapes to him, and Paul, G3TZO, is a good friend of his. That's Frank Withall, I think, on one of the walls of the YMCA at Chester. That's the first shots of Arthur doing UHF contests from his Morris Martin 1000 van. Meanwhile, in circa 1964, the Four Most were a famous Merseyside pop group. Hello, Do you recognise anybody? If you know who he is, he's a member of the Chester Radio Society. When you're on your way, I say, mm, hello, little girl. There he is, it's Alan. Looks a bit different now, don't you, Alan? Hello, little girl. Thank you, wife, for the photographs and the details and the details of the record later. Right, now we move on to uh, another NFD. It looks like 1965 Hal at Eaton Road at Hanbridge. Yes, it is. Can you confirm that? Yes, yeah. I can. There's Dave JMF, the first picture I think yes. we've got of J JMF, and then Ian, BTW, mm -hmm. Jeff, and the GKZ, a very it's young GKZ, Peter, GKZ. Young GKZ. Now, that, isn't that Richard? It's, it's His father used Richard. to own the, the Royal Oak, Royal wasn't Oak it? Street. Of course, John FMV. And I think it's John's rig, isn't it? It's it is KW2000. KW yes, nice to see one of those again, yes. isn't it, Hal? I don't know whose Vauxhall that was there. Now, that letter, you won't be able to read it from where you're sitting, but that was to Dennis Wardle, G3EWZ, and it says, I'm writing to you on behalf of the Council of the Radio Society of Great Britain to thank you for your news service on 80 metres. Do you remember, Dennis, on a Sunday morning, reading the news? Bet you'd forgotten, hadn't you? I know, I know, I used to listen to it every Sunday morning. You did a grand job there, Dennis. I think this is NFD 1966 at Hanbridge, Left to right, Tony T-O-W, uh, John F-N-V, Howell A-T-Z, Bert J-A-Z, Arthur A-W-S, Dennis D-W-Z, Richard, uh, Ian 4 B-T-W, Tom Kelly, Peter G-K-Z, Jeff, myself, and Peter P-Y-U. What a mouthful. So we've all changed a bit there, haven't we, on that mm. one, Hal? We have a little. Brief snatch here of the ISGB Bulletin, November 1966, the Isle of Arran. And here, Shortwave magazine, 1967, off to the Orkneys. From the left, Tony, GW3TOW. Jeff, Shortwave listener, Howell380Z, Reg DRB. Clive, who I can't remember the call sign of. Albert UOH, Paul TZO, and John 3FNV. A picture that really uh, conjures up memories from many years ago. And here we are. Up in the Orkneys, at the old campsite, this would be the first time we visited uh, Orkney, or maybe the second time. There we have Albert, <laughs> three Euro H, a bluting. This campsite was near the village of Twat, T W A double T, uh, an old wartime airfield, which was also the site of the local go kart club. And we visited this site about three years. The main instigator of our visit being uh, Fred, GM3HXC, who we see here at the KW2000B with KW500. Equipment, as you see there, in sparkling condition, but uh, now very much uh, relegated to the back page of uh, Ragcom. What a chef he makes. Bangers again. You can't actually see in this photograph, but Reg DRB always used to post a menu up for the day, and by Jove, we had to adhere to it. Doesn't it look good? Still getting rid of the grease out of those chips now. <laughs> yes, I think everybody can see uh, who that is. Here we have a few uh, glimpses of Kirkwall, a, a town which hasn't changed much. We've just visited there now this year. 
and that picture could have been taken uh, a few weeks ago. NFD 1967 was at Poulton Aerodrome off Direction Road at Hanbridge. Hal, what sort of aerial are we putting up there? Well, that is a cubicle quad, which was manufactured by one of the members. It's a giant thing, isn't it? I can't recall who it is at the moment. The chap with no shirt on there, that's Malcolm, UWV, isn't it? It I is. Recognise him. Yes. Is that Tony... Oh, I thought it was Tony T.O.W., I'm not quite certain there. It's, it's not the best of cine films that we've managed to capture, but I think it demonstrates the, the efforts that were made in those days. There's Reg DRB, that's a, a good shot of Reg. And, uh, and It looked as if we were assembling the mouse just as the thing was going up. That's right. Mm. That's quite a thing to get up there. Did we use one of those every year? Or no, no, we only used it for one year. I don't think it was a particularly successful aerial. But after all those uh, efforts? The design is actually good, but uh, our particular efforts on that occasion... Oh, I there she goes. ...met the requirements. Whoops. Oh, uh -huh. there's Alan LDH. Malcolm running around there like a scalded fly. <laughs> I don't think he could do much if it did fall at that stage. There's a clear shot of Poulton Aerodrome now. It's a disused aerodrome on the Wrexham Road and we were allowed the use of it for many years. That's Clive, isn't it, there on the left? Albert UOH. Yes, yes. yes that's, that's quite something. We used something. to put up a very impressive array though, in those days, you know. Well, that certainly looks impressive. Did we have two stations then? We, we did, yeah. yes. Now those cows there, they were just sort of on the uh, on the eight millimetre film, and I thought I'd leave them there because I particularly remember the amount of cow uh, dirt that was around there. The control tower, which you'll see in a moment, the disused one where we used to sleep, that was absolutely full of it, swimming in fact, and the smell was something uh, not to be spoken about. You can see the era that we were in by the cars there, and the, we, we even had to shoo away the cows from the aerial guys. That small white tent down there, I've got a feeling that that might be Chris's. TPY's tent, I'm not certain. Oh, there's Paul, G3 TZO on his own. A very young TZO. Yeah, remember that, Hal? Uh, I do indeed. There's Reggie's car in the background. Oh, there, there's a G3 ATZ. And Hal? Oh, uh, my, sorry. My natural pose. Well, <laughs> every time I see you, Hal, you've got a bottle. I, I, I presume that's what... Uh, that's why I'm in good condition today. Well, you've taken the words from my mouth, Hal, yes. There's Malcolm UWV before he went to Australia. Nice to see Reg there with his tape recorder. I think he used to have that tape recorder wherever he went, didn't he? I wonder if he's still got the tapes he made. Of course, every aerial must come down. It's certainly coming down there. There's a degraded shot coming up very shortly. Oh, there's a 2000 rig. I think that's Alan LDH operating there. Mm, SG3 that's LDH. The Do you? <laughs> hey, oh, this is one. No, it's, is, it's, it's a little bit rough. To take a mask yeah. down. Just a little bit rough, this shot, but I think you'll, you'll like to see the way that the club's mask was treated in the 1967. I think, in actual fact, someone let go of a guy rather well, just early. Look at that crash and we still use that mask today so it must be a good one that's arthur in his shack in ellesmere port quite an early shot of arthur there 1967 when he really started in the uh, the days of vhf and uhf there's harry and jack at the northern radio society's rally you look nice and handsome there harry don't you and there's another one of arthur in his shack in ellesmere port and as you can see he's progressed now into the world of Edison ec10s and such things that's an NFD one with John FNV. And who's that on the left hand? No, I don't recognise the place at all. But back in the tent again. Now that's Merit and Load, Dave G3 VBC and Arthur G8 AWS on another 70 sem contest. And that's another shot of the site, including the trig point at Merit and Low. That's Basil O'Brien at a club dinner presenting um, a trophy to Arthur for winning a 70 centimetre contest, if I remember correctly. That was in the 1970s at the Queen Hotel. And Basil and Dennis are toasting the ladies. You'll notice the ladies are sitting down, so that's obviously what's happening there. There's our president, Ted Girdler, the Mullard rep, if you remember. My wife to the right of him, Vivian, and his wife to the left of him, Pat. That's at the Queen Hotel. There's me chairing the, the thing again. Can't keep out of it, can I? Arthur to the right with Brenda, his wife. That's Dennis. I, I don't know what he was doing there. He was obviously chairman at the time and probably telling everybody all about the club's last 12 months, I think. Oh, there's Russell BMH right at the back with his wife and Paul TZO with his wife. Mm, Frank, Frank Withel on the right Frank at the front. On the right and and was that Matt, Matt, Young, on Matt Young on the left? Oh, yes, that, that was Dot and that's Dave JMF in the foreground. He was ALA then. President Ted Girdler again with Dennis and the respective wives 
again at the Queen Hotel. Very well attended in those days, 75 to 80 people. Dave JMF or G8ALA. Hasn't he changed dancing with Arthur's wife, Brenda? There's Brenda again in a mini. Here's a 1970 club meeting. It's the only one, the only photograph I've got of the, the YMCA club room, which I thought was worth including. The quality is diabolical, but there's some faces you'll remember there. Top left, middle almost, Louis Mather. I'm sure you all remember him. And I think that's Bill Pure, very early Bill Pure yes, to the is, left indeed. of him, isn't yes. it, Hal? And below those two gentlemen, it's Basil, isn't it? Basil, Basil O'Brien. And, um, and John Goldberg, E.G.H. And, and your son, Jeff, and um, oh, Dave yes. BBC. Ah, that's Recessmore. That's a VHF NFD up at Recessmore in 1970. Arthur A.W.S. lecturing at the YMCA, at VHF or UHF, no doubt. Good on you, Arthur. Recognise the old mantelpiece there. VHF NFD, that's when Arthur took us to the first position for the Chester Club on 70 centimetres and they encouraged everybody else into UHF and VHF and look on the on the item 15 there Chester with only two stations GIZ and AWS we came uh, 15th out of the whole of the country I thought that was pretty good there's a first for Arthur on 70 centimetres and that's where Arthur, get, Arthur gets the council cup down at the RSGB there for all, all his efforts in 70 centimetres admirable that Arthur that's a press cutting of the uh, of the dinner of the club dinner in 1971, in fact. But it was a press cutting, that's why the quality is not too good. That's VHF NFD at Axe Edge Moor in 1971. And uh, there's Arthur again first on the 432 meg part of the, uh, the section. Oh, that's when we went to Green Lowther and doing a bit of cooking there for Arthur on yet another contest. Arthur's giving us a single sideband lecture there on his new 25 watt transmitter. And that was very, very rare in 1971 on 70 centimetres, 25 watts of single sideband. Arthur and I at one of the uh, the rallies. Drayton Manor, to be precise. Ah, now now we're going to HFD 1972. Here again, a very similar photograph of years Eaton gone Road. by. Eaton Road, how that's right, and there's the. Oh, that's noticeable. Richard on the left, he's holding the 13 amp plug. Yet we're trying to operate a radio station. That went in the local press. <laughs> <laughs> Things we do. Now that was the mull of. Galloway. 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 That one wasn't it. There's Ted Girdler, our president. Um, Speaking about the ladies, I feel, on that one in 1972. Presenting Arthur with um, one of our trophies. That's right, the G3 FMV trophy. There's uh, Dave Cutts, G8HNV at the time, giving us Electron Radio. Oh, that was our 25th anniversary, 1948 to 1973, at the Queen Hotel. Reg Lascelles there was our guest, and uh, I was in the chair, and um, we had the various toasts as per usual. Uh, I think the, the toast of the Radio Society was proposed by Reg Lascelles. And there's Reg in the picture in the middle with the moustache from Jodrell Bank. You see, uh, 1973. That's uh, that's Poulton again, is it? Yes. No, Hanbridge. No, Hanbridge. That's Hanbridge, that one. Eaton Road, Hanbridge again. That's, uh, that's, also that's Arthur and Peter PYU. Oh, that looks like a, a Dennis design there, would you think? Yes, I'm sure. Ably assisted by me. Of, of course, absolutely, with your, your usual ATU. Sorry, Dennis. <laughs> KW2000. We, we were really into 2000s. Perhaps that's all we had. There's Richard again operating. This is all the, uh, the 1973 HF field day. And of course, everything has to come down at one time or another, and there we are taking the mass down, pulling those mass sections apart. Mm -hmm. They've lasted extremely well, haven't they, Hal? Peter PYU well. with his phenomenal strength, pulling out guy pegs for us. And dare I say it, Peter, everybody else does. There's Rommel's car. 1940 circuit. <laughs> and still going strong. And still going strong. Oh, rugby club. Vickers Cross Carnival, Dennis helping us there with his Collins, a famous Collins. I think we should associate Dennis with Collins all our lives, shouldn't we? And that's the Mull of Kintyre. Mull of Kintyre, in the distillery. The distillery, that's right, Hal. Sampling the local brew. Yeah, that was a radio outing, believe it or not. And that's up at the top, where the wind blew and it ripped all the tents down. That's Dave FGC there. And it blew the most essential little tent down as well. It, it did as well, that's right, yeah. It was, it was rather drafty at the time. using it. Ah, now there's Sue, now GW8FZC, and Reg G3DRB, helping the spastics in amateur radio at Doran Court in Upton by Chester. 1900 years history of Chester. Uh, if you remember, the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh came to Chester, and two members of each society in Chester were invited to the cathedral. Dave Ollahead and myself went. Very memorable morning, that was. There's the invitation card and the order of service. That's uh, GW3VBC, Dave Blanchard, that's one of the August outings to Brennig. You can see the reservoir on the right-hand side there. And there's Arthur handing our children across the stepping stones with Roy F.V.Y. 
the guy after sampling the waters there. <laughs> Now that's uh, another HF contest where uh, Arthur INX is very, very sunburnt, so it must have been a, a warm summer or he'd just come back from one of the islands. Other faces you recognise there, Hal? Nice and nice yes, young ladies there. infiltrating yes, now, nice isn't there, in there. this day and age? Very nice to see. Oh, now, this was the installation of the president of uh, the RSGB in 1981, a very good friend of the club's Basil G2 AMV. And Basil was... Um, installed at the Queen Hotel at Chester where he asked us to give him a hand together with the World Club and we put on a, on a station there's uh, Alan OJQ and George RLV and Arthur INX operating the, the talking station I think Derek EOM was there there's the uh, retiring president um, he was Peter Balestrini. that's right Peter Balestrini and he was handing over the chain of office to Basil there Oh, well, then we went on to Bellevue, Manchester, where Chris ICT put on a very, very good stand. You'll see it in a moment. Chris made that all himself with his, um, his all his machinery he had available to himself. Then we went to help the scouts at Blaken, uh, at Blaken High School and showed the scouts a little bit about amateur radio. And believe me, that has snowballed. I'll tell you more about that later on. That's a press cutting of me with my amateur television about 12 months ago in the shack. Gildan Sutton Carnival wanted amateur radio, so we went and gave them amateur radio. And there's all the lads who are helping. We had a very, very, very nice uh, weekend there. Well, all day Saturday, should I say. A lot of people worked very, very hard there. Now look at this one. It's a long, wide press cutting, which I had the trouble to, to actually show you on the screen. But do you recognise the face? I'm sure you do. Yes, there he is. A man of many skills, George, G3 TTN. I think you've got a lot to answer for in the club, George. If he's not mending watches, it's amateur radio and CW and all sorts of other things. That was in the local papers only uh, only a few months ago. And uh, I think the comment said you could talk to your friends in, was it uh, W, K and J, A, any day of the week. That's the very latest high-power single sideband contest at the uh, beginning of September this year. And now here's a little bit of uh, videotape on it, which Kevin took for us. Tried to edit it just a little bit. But basically, we were uh, at the rugby club at Vickers Cross, where we are this evening, and uh, Dennis had one of these uh, brain waves about a new aerial. Believe it or not, it's one that the commercial boys had used. What was it, Hal? Was it four dipoles? Um, uh, yes, it was fed a from a centre point. Uh, uh, Dennis and myself. In actual two inverted Vs. That's right. Two inverted Vs at right angles to each other, therefore giving you a four. Um, leg feeder. Now this is interesting here, there's Dave ZRE and Dave, there's Dave ZRE. Um, I think he's got the appropriate, no he hasn't, in a moment you'll, uh, there's Tony TKD, our treasurer. Uh, I'm just waiting for a shot of where the four aerials are all brought together onto like um, a cross piece. There it is. Now that cross piece there takes all four ends of the long wires together and then we hoist that up to the top of the mast and then we feed whichever feeder we want, either an inverted fee or join them together for a long dipole. That is true. And this is actually the first time I've seen it because at that time we were up in Orkney. Oh, I see. Well, there's a piece that was overhanging and we're actually winching up at the moment the, um, the four feeders that we should be doing, I think, shortly. Then it's, it's nice to see that the four JMF... There it is. That's it. You see the uh, four feeders ending there. ...and so forth went together so well, despite the fact that we well, weren't there to see it. Right, you see, that's the device. And the lads are just finishing it off before uh, the erection takes place. Oh, we had problems. The club's bought a new rig, and it's a Trio TS520. And the, um, the generator failed on this particular evening, and we went up to 315 volts from 240, and I'm trying to actually repair it with an angle poise lamp in the tent, and uh, what a job that was. You'll see the mains transformer, the offending beast there. I would now like to report on official record that it's working all OK. There's Dennis, um, the following morning, adjusting the aerial. We're making some further adjustments to the aerial. But it did work extremely well. We could work many, many countries all over the world, and we're certainly going to use it again. We're preparing now to take the mast down. There's the gym pole we use every year, isn't it, Hal? Mm -hmm. there's, Dave, uh, there's Adrian, and there's Dave IFA. And we're just about to, to lower the mast here. The weather that particular weekend was very, very bad indeed, if you remember. We lost a tent, even down at sea level. And there's Adrian, and I think Arthur AWS, we're just about to lower it down. 
you'll notice that we take it down far more gently than we did in that previous cine film, as those master by now, Dennis tells me, must be four or five hundred pound each. So we're hoping to hold on to this mass for a few more years. There we go. Gently. Gently does it. Adrian holding on to the gym pole there. Yes, and that, um, that ended a very, very blustery contest. We had rig problems, we had generator problems, and the only thing that worked extremely well was the aerial there. Well, I think we learn from our experience, don't we, Hal? We do. And there we are, the, finally the mast's down. And that virtually brings us up to date now. Right, and every good radio club needs a good committee, and this year was no exception. They've helped me immensely, as they do, I'm sure, every single year from 1948. Um, there's your vice chairman, Dave, G4, JMF. And um, there's Tony, your treasurer, with his diplomatic case. I think he's actually writing a cheque out there. Shame on you, Tony. We try and keep the money in the bank, don't we? <laughs> Dave's at RE. And uh, just moving over to our left there is Chris. There he is, G3TPY, who at the moment he's helping us a lot with the scouts. Now, I think he's going to mention a little bit about that later on to you. And to Chris's left is Dave, G6IFA. Do you remember that pop photograph, the pop singer in 1959? Well, that's how it looks now. And there's your president, Dennis. Incidentally, Dennis has been a, a chairman of the radio club for about 12 years, around about 1958. And there's, of course, your secretary, Chris, G8 ICT. He has many irons in the fire, and he really does a grand job for us. Thanks, Chris. So during 1983, thanks to the committee and to all other members of the Chester Radio Society for your support with the Southport show, the quiz with the Wirral, I'm sure you all remember, uh, the purchasing of the club's TS520 rig, VHF NFD at Recess Moor, the HF single side bend contest at uh, Vickers Cross, and of course the barbecue. I don't know who went to the barbecue, but Dennis actually decided to move away from radio. Well, I, I think I should explain here that that's Linda, uh, the lady who looks after the bar here at the rugby club, and um, she came out to collect some glasses, and, uh, and we just captured Dennis at the right moment there. Now, in 1984, Dave Hicks and myself were asked to help the round table on their laser appeal. Well done, Fred, it says. There's Fred in the top right-hand corner of the picture. We were doing emergency radio coverage. We were up at 5.30 in the morning at the crook of D. Dave Hicks was put into that little boat there with a two-metre rig. Yours truly was in the groves and we had an emergency cover in case anything went wrong. I'm glad to say it didn't. And he earned, I think it was £2,000 for that charity. In October 1984, we helped Vickers Cross Scouts. That was Arthur Brighton and his troop, the 25th Oldfield Scouts. And we operated Jamboree on the air. Very, very good turnout indeed for an HF, VHF and the UHF station. The only press clipping that we have is from the Chester Chronicle at the time. Not the best of pictures, but I think it demonstrates a point that we were starting to be quite active locally with our very own local scout group. In 1986, the Radio Society applied to the local lottery fund for some form of financial assistance to help with a linear amplifier. We were very successful, and in May of that year, the Lady Mayor, the Loris Witten, presented the Society with a cheque for £400 as part payment towards the linear amplifier. As we're all well aware now, the, the club has purchased and used that uh, linear amplifier with great success. And here's a picture of the uh, officers at the time. Ray Williams on the left, Dave Hicks, a chairman at the time, Myself, Alan Warren in the middle, Dolores Witten, then Tony Cooper, our treasurer, I think, if I remember correctly at the time, and then Dennis, our president, G3WZ. 
now into 1988 and 40 very successful years of Chester Radio Society behind us. Thank you this evening particularly to Howell, G3ATZ, to John, G3FNB, both founder members of the Radio Society, to Paul, G3TZO, and also to Kevin for some of our videotape. And of course, to all of you who have helped us over these last 40 years to make Chester Radio Society the success it is. Thank you.